On the 18th of January 2013, I arrived at Sydney Airport on a one-way ticket from Germany with my one suitcase. My plane had landed late, so I had missed the shuttle to the Bible College where they had organized my accommodation. At that point, I realized that I had just moved halfway across the world without having even an address of where I was going to live. <laughs> and here I am, so organized in everything I do, not that moment. All I had was a contact of the Bible College. Well, I trusted them, didn't I? The day I left Germany, I left my comfort zone behind. I had never planned to go to Australia. In fact, it was one of the nevers I said in my life. Every second German has it on their bucket list to go to Australia to visit this beautiful country or New Zealand and just a far away away from Germany, but that was not me. I was not interested in this land down under which I love so dearly now. It was so far from anything I knew. Have you ever been on a mission? And I'm not talking about a mission trip or going to Australia or going to Bible College overseas. Have you been on a normal mission? Early in life, even as children, and I watch this every day at Aldi where I work, is where children are on a mission to get that candy bar or to get that one treat they were promised. So they are on a mission towards what they want. Then later on, we're on a mission towards achieving our goals, to have, find a spouse, to have a house, to have children, to be successful or whatever that means. And it continues as we upgrade the car and then renovate the house again and then change jobs. So it goes on all our life. The meaning of on a mission in this context means to pursue a task that one considers to be important with determination and focus. And it's amazing what we can achieve when we put our energy and focus into anything we do. And for some of you, that's more of your personality. You're, that's just, you're a go-getter. That's just what you do. And for others, it's like, oh, it's not so much me. But I guarantee every single person of us has some part of their life where they're going to be on a mission to achieve. And they put their energy and their focus in anything, their time and efforts and resources, we put that in there to achieve whatever we're setting out to achieve. My focus changed significantly when I was 22, when I made that conscious decision to live as a follower of Jesus. My life was no longer about what I wanted to do, what I wanted. God had called me out of my old life, which was uncertainty and darkness, and he offered me a fresh start into a life of true freedom with a future and a hope. Let's not pretend that transition was easy or quick. We heard Tara's story two weeks ago about her calling and how she's moved from her old life into her new life. So I would say until I got baptized, and I, I shared that um, in my last talk, how I was, would live with one foot in my old life and my other foot in my new life, trying to make sense of it all, until I got baptized, when I believe the fire of God, as Jeff was talking about last week, truly took a hold of me. Fast forward a few years later in my mid-20s, I was an area manager for a company in, um, in Germany, <clears throat> Um, similar to Aldi here in Australia, called Lidl. And I was an area manager there, and I loved it. I loved the job. It was great. Um, but after three years, this new mission started in unfolding in front of me, the idea to go to Bible college. I wanted to learn more about this God that I've been hearing about church, at church and, and even growing up a little bit here and there. And I wanted to learn more about the Bible and how to build the church. But as I mentioned before, Australia was not on my list of options. I consciously even avoided talking to my pastors at the time because I knew they would encourage me to go to Australia because that's where they went to Bible college. And so I was like, no, 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 I'm just doing this my own. I'm just doing my own thing here. I'm just trying to find a Bible college. There are so many Bible colleges in Europe. 
surely I'll find one. But long story short, <laughs> after not having peace about any of the colleges in, in Europe, well, there are some amazing ones, I started opening myself up to the idea to go to Sydney. And the rest is history. 11 years later, I'm still here, loving it, I'm grateful. Today I will be continuing the, the series on the Jesus Factor and talk about the mission of God for our lives. The word mission comes from the Latin word mitere, which means to send. I'm talking about the mission of God, missio dei, the mission of God. So the main question I want to ask you right now in this moment is who is sending you? Whose mission are you on? Are you following God where he sends you? Or are you on your own mission? So let's see what the Bible says about God's mission for our lives. I will focus on Luke chapter 10, where Jesus sends out the 70 or 72 disciples, depending on which translation you're reading. So Luke chapter 10, 11 to, uh, 1 to 11. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them two by two ahead of him to every town and place where he was about to go. He told them, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Go, I am sending you out like lambs among wolves. Isn't that exciting? To not take a purse or a bag, so not even one suitcase or sandals, and do not greet anyone on the road. When you enter a house, first say, peace to this house. If someone who promotes peace and is there, your peace will rest on them. If not, it will return to you. Stay there, eating and drinking whatever they give you. For the worker deserves his wages. Do not move around from house to house. When you enter a town and are welcomed, eat what is offered to you. Heal those there who are ill and tell them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But when you enter a town and are not welcomed, Go into its streets and say, even the dust of your town we wipe from our feet as a warning to you. Yet be sure of this, the kingdom of God has come near. And then verses 16 and 17, it says, whoever listens to you, listens to me. This is Jesus talking. Whoever listens to you, listens to me. Whoever rejects you, rejects me. But whoever rejects me, resents, rejects him who sent me. So Jesus is talking about God who sent him. So whoever's rejecting us, rejecting Jesus and God. And then the 72 returned with joy and said, Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. Okay, this is a junk of scripture. I could make so many points out of this. <laughs> There's so much in this, but I've chosen five that I pray will encourage you, inspire you, maybe challenge you that may your hearts and minds and our hearts and minds today be open to listen to what God wants to say to us today. So number one, who does Jesus send? He sends anyone who is willing. Jesus does not discriminate. He sends anyone who is willing. You don't have to be qualified. Look at the disciples. If you have watched the Chosen series, I can encourage you to watch season uh, three, episode two, which is called Two by Two, which is about how Jesus sends out the 12, not the 70, but how he sends out the 12. And Jesus makes this subtle comment, which is quite funny, says that he was looking for the qualified. He wouldn't have chosen those two, those 12 over there. Um, so that just tells you that... It's not about who you are. It's not about what, you've, what you can or can't do. Uh, and when you look at this scripture that I was reading, he's sending out the 72 others. So he sent out the 12, which you'd think, oh, they're so, they must be special, and it's just the 72 others. So they're like, you know. But the reality is he doesn't even name them. It doesn't, it's not, it doesn't matter who we are, what we've, where we've come from. It matters that we're willing. And if you look at the disciples, you know, they are not very, you know, what can I say, qualified. Peter, the emotional roller coaster. Judas, who betrayed Jesus. Matthew, who insulted his Jewish heritage by collecting tax for the Romans. Doubting Thomas, the sons of thunder, and so on. That being said, it's not, it's not a waste of time to be equipped. 
for whatever God has for you, okay? I'm not saying, I'm not against educating yourself to what God is calling you to do. Hello, I've done Bible college. Definitely recommend that or, you know, being equipped some way. But it's really not about where you come from or what you can do. It's about that you're willing. It's about having a willing heart, open hands to do what God is calling you to do. So that, those, that's who Jesus sends. Number two, Jesus sends us ahead of him. So what does that mean? So this scripture that I was sharing from Luke, Luke 10 is actually playing sort of six to seven months before Easter. Okay, So last October, pretty much, Jesus sent out the 72 before he then, seven, about seven months later, would go on a cross and rise again. So Jesus sent them out to prepare the way. And he sends us out today to prepare the way because once he's coming back, that everyone who believes in him can join us in eternity. So the reality is, though, where does Jesus send us? Sometimes outside of our comfort zone. Yay! Like truly lambs amongst the wolves, okay? But he also said that if we are not welcome, if somebody doesn't want to hear from us, we should not bother. We should not pretty much not waste our time. So we need to remember that rejection is not about us. It is about Jesus, pretty much. So Jesus sends us sometimes, like sheep amongst the wolves, um, which sometimes is in our families, okay? Sometimes in our friendship circles. This doesn't mean that they have to be wolves. They can, you know, can be tame and can be lovely. And, and the reality is that it's really up to what God is calling you to do within your family, to do within your friendship group, to do with where, where you're working, to your colleagues. God might send you on a mission. It doesn't have to be overseas. It doesn't have to be big ministry, big whatever. It can be very simple. It does not have to be complicated. Okay? It, but I can mean this week, who can you be open to to share the love of Jesus with in some way? Who can you be generous with? Who can you serve in some way? Who can, you can tell about Jesus in our community, to anyone in need, of course. Even within our church, you know, being on mission within our church doesn't have to be outside the church. You can be on mission within the church because there's so much to do. You know, join the team, <laughs> definitely. If you, know, if, you wanna, if you feel that God maybe wants to get you outside of comfort zone, that can be within the church. For some that is outside the comfort zone, and that's completely fine. So God sends us ahead of him because there's so much to do to re bring in the harvest. Jesus sends those who are willing. He sends us ahead of him. Number three, he sends us two by two. We are not alone. We are better together. We've had a whole series on that last year. And, and this two by two, this, this um, phrase in Luke 10, is actually not just so he's like, you know, so they don't have to go by themselves. It's actually in Jewish tradition that a matter can be established by two or three witnesses. So it's actually quite powerful to go two by two. And in Ecclesiastes 4, 9, by 9 to 10, it says two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. We can achieve more if we're, if we're two or more people. And yes, that scripture, I've totally claim that to find a husband, okay? Two, two are better than one, absolutely. That is the script, what you can use the scripture for. Um, but what it's really about is that we need friends on a mission. We need partners on a mission. And that doesn't have to be a spouse. It does not have to be. We need to, inst we need to build, and that's why it's so important to build those relationships within the church as well so we can encourage and inspire each other and to to be on a mission, to go on a mission together, no matter what, what will face us. It'll, it'll be so powerful. Um, because the reality is, yes, the harvest is plentiful. And Jesus there says as well that we're meant to pray for workers. So pray for that partner in crime for you or that, you know, that friend on a mission that you want to bring along, that you want to do life with in terms of on a mission for God. So pray for that as well. Okay, now I've got two questions for us, or, you know, 
two points, really, two more points, where I'm going to talk a bit more about the why and the how. So why we should, you know, why does Jesus send us? And then how are we meant to do this? So number four is why does Jesus send us today? Because the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few. It's one of the key reasons we want to be on mission. We want to pray for the workers, but we also want to be the workers. We want to be the hands and feet of Jesus. And I've got a whole list here of um, somewhere in my slides, a whole list of the reasons why Jesus sends us today. Um, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Sarah. Um, so Ephesians 2.10, you know, where we were created in Christ Jesus to do good works. So it's not just, not just you know, for like whatever. It's really because we have a purpose. God has given each and every one of us a purpose to do those good works. It's part of our identity as followers of Jesus. We are ambassadors for Christ. The people that you might, might be reaching, none of us can be reaching. The colleagues you're working with, the people in your neighborhood, the people in your community, maybe you're the only Jesus that they will ever know. Maybe they're the only person that you're, not, you're the only person who can be that light and soul in their life. We're not to become weary in doing good. Some of us have been in ministry for a long time. Some of you have been in a ministry longer than I've been alive. And so it can be getting, you can be getting weary. It can be getting tiring. So we're meant to Keep on, and as um, Jeff's message last week was amazing about the fire of God. Let's not get burned out. Let's let's stay fresh in the Holy Spirit. Let's stay fresh with what we're putting ourselves towards. Okay, let's have our boundaries. Let's not do everything. Let's do something. The something, the little thing that God can do through your life, through my life. And then there are a few more reasons, definitely. Um, we, we're to seek his kingdom first, and um, we are to make disciples. So there's so many reasons we want to be on mission for God. But how now? Number five, how are we meant to do this? Firstly, with power and authority. Jesus gave the disciples that temporary um, power and authority when he sent them on their mission in that um, moment of time. But he's given us this permanent power and authority. In Acts chapter 1, verse 8, we read, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So we are having, we, we have this power and authority. We've got to use it, okay? And remember, because sometimes I, I know, I, I sometimes remember that I'm not alone and I, you know, I'm not an island and God is with me and people are with me. So we can do this and we have the authority. And sometimes it takes courage to step into that authority. And when we have this prompting to encourage someone or to, you know, to be generous to someone, to actually step out and do that, it might be awkward, might be, might be you know, uncomfortable. But that's when we step outside of our comfort zone. The second point, how are we meant to do this? With discernment. We need to be wise in how we are on a mission. You know, we can be on a mission in very, very weird ways. Let's not do that. Let's not Bible bash. Let's not preach the gospel on the street corners. Let's not do weird things, okay? But with, and, and the, the main point really is to see people how God sees them. Have that compassion. Have that love. How do, how do, how does God see that person? Why is he calling me to that person? That is such a difficult person, maybe. Not, not in this church, of course. Um, but how do, we, how do we love them? How do we care for them? How do we serve them? Have, have that, those eyes, uh, see through God's eyes. The next point, with urgency. How are we meant to do this? With urgency. I do urge you today to seek God and what he has for you to be on a mission because the, the harvest is out there. The harvest is plentiful. And, you've, and, 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 you know, the workers are few. So let's be some of those workers. Let's step into it. With a friend, my next point, and I've mentioned this before, let's go two by two. Let's go with prayer. Let's be on a mission with prayer, of course. It should actually start with prayer. Asking God, okay, what, what is this mission? Maybe this new mission that you have for me. 
Where are you sending me right now? Where, where are you sending me? Maybe you're sending me outside, somewhere different. Maybe you're sending me towards within, where I'm currently in, in my family, in my workplace, in my school, in w wherever I find myself. With God's provision. Definitely with God's provision. The disciples, you know, there was like the real deal. They went out without, without anything. And they really relied <laughs> on the meals and everything of, of uh, the generosity of people. But for us, what does that mean for us? We got to believe that God has the resources we need, even if that's time, if that's time, if it's finances. But if it's words, like that's that's one of my challenges. Like, how do you say that? How do you how do you, how do you want to like how what, what do you want me to say? Ask the Holy Spirit in that moment. What what do you want me to say? Oh, do you maybe not want me to say anything? Maybe I meant to listen and just to be there for people. And then finally, with strength, with, with strength <laughs> to withstand temptations. In Matthew 4, Jesus was tempted. Jesus was tempted. But he he's had the strength, of course, he was Jesus, to withstand just temptations. Because it's so tempting to not be on a mission and to just stay in our comfort zone. And to just stay and do what, we always, what we've always done. And to just like, la, 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 not listen. <laughs> I've done that. Done that plenty of times. Not yeah. The reality is that we are called to be on a mission. And I love in that chosen episode that I was mentioning earlier in um, season three, episode two. The episode is called Two by Two. After Jesus left for the night, and so I don't know if you've seen the, the episode, but basically Jesus has them all in Peter's house. They sit around the table, all the 12 and Jesus. And Jesus tells them, like gives them the instruction, instructions, how it's going to go. They're going to go on a mission, two by two, etc. And then after Jesus left, the disciples go out, stand in front of Matthew's house. And they're like looking at each other like, um, what are we doing? Um, are we ready for this? And they pretty much said, no, no, we're terrified. We're terrified because they have seen how Jesus was rejected and how Jesus was attacked over and over again because he had upset the Romans and the religious leaders. And now the, the disciples were meant to do the same. Now we're meant to do the same, go as lambs um, amongst the wolves. The amazing thing they did, and that sort of illustrates this whole message really, is um, that they then stood together arms around each other, the 12 of them, and they literally just acknowledged they were afraid, and then they prayed. And they prayed Psalm 3, verses 1 to 6. And it's beautiful. It's a beautiful scene. I can encourage you to watch it. And I've seen that plenty of times in my life when I've been on a mission, and I've, I've, I've been afraid. I've been nervous. I've been, you know, challenged. Like, no, this is uncomfortable. You know, but then when you, when you see little rewards, like... Even at work, when they notice that you're not swearing or that you, you know, like something is different about you. And then you can have open conversations. Or like Jeff was saying, what did you do on the weekend? Well, I went to church, you know, and we've got like uh, great times, good friends from church. I always love seeing you guys at Aldi, you know, visiting and shopping, obviously. Um, but it's just beautiful to have that connection with each other. So I was wondering how that all has actually a, um, a connection with Palm Sunday. But I love that the kids already shared the message of Palm Sunday, so I don't, I don't have to. But one of the things that really stood out to me with, um, with, this, to, with this day today and this message is pretty much that this is a great week to practice being on mission. Okay, This is a great week for us to firstly pray, pray today. God, who do you want me to reach? Who do you want me to invite? Who do you want me to share an encouraging word to with, with today? Who or this week? Who can I bring to church? Who can I talk to about my faith? Who can I serve in the community with? What can I do around this Easter time to share the love of Christ? So once again, I want to ask you, whose mission are you on? Because what the disciples, sorry, not the disciples, the crowds on Palm Sunday, what they said in Matthew 21, verse 9, 
the crowds that went ahead of him, of Jesus, and those that followed, shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord in the highest heaven. So I wonder, and this is just a little me thought out there, maybe a little revelation, maybe complete heresy. Don't quote me on it. But just a thought, if Jesus had not sent out his disciples and those others six or seven months beforehand, would he have had the crowds that were there on Palm Sunday to welcome him, to celebrate him as a savior, as a, as a king, sorry, and also to shout out Hosanna, which means save us, Lord, save us. Would they have seen, would they have recognized that they have the need for, for rescue? Would they have realized that they actually have a need for rescue? And so they're now they're realizing, okay, God, okay, Jesus, King, save us, rescue us. And I love the message, sorry, the, the Passion Translation of Psalm 118, 26, where it says, and that's pretty much what um, it says in Matthew 21 as well, Oh God, please come and save us again. Hosanna. Bring us your breakthrough victory. Blessed is this one who comes to you, the sent one of the Lord. And from within the temple we cry, we bless you. So Jesus was the sent one. God sent Jesus. And now Jesus is sending us. We are on a mission for Jesus. And we First of all, need to have need to see that need that we actually need rescue first, okay? And a lot of many of us have already received that that rescue and that salvation, and we're receiving it each and every single day because we recognize that we need rescue. We need God to save us, and we need God to give us this breakthrough victory. Like maybe you've been praying for someone. Maybe you've been praying for people in your community, in your family, in your in your in your work. For, for them to take steps in their faith. And maybe this is the moment, this is the week, this holy week, this Easter, is where you're going to get a breakthrough victory with those people. Maybe in your personal life, whatever it is, we need saving from our Jesus. So once again, whose mission are you on? Are, you on, are we on our own mission or on God's mission? Do we need rescue or have we got it all together? The reality is that our own mission sometimes leaves us empty. But God's mission will never do that. Let me pray, if you don't mind standing with us today. Who's been on keys or guitar? Thank you. Thanks, Matt. So let's pray together. Let's be open. Let's have open minds and hearts for what God wants to say to us today. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, God. Thank you that you have sent your one and only Son to die on a cross for us so we can have life and eternal. He rose again, God. And we are just about to celebrate that next weekend. We're just about to, rec uh, to remember that and to, to um, acknowledge the huge sacrifice that you have done for us, God. You have sent your son, and now your son has been sending us. He sends anyone who's willing. You're sending us ahead of you because you want to reach those people that we are about to, we are about to reach. You have prepared the way for us, so we're preparing the way for you now. So when you're coming back, Jesus, that people... The, the, our loved ones and the people that you're calling us to be on a mission will meet you in person and live in eternity together. Thank you, God, that you are sending us on a mission, not alone, not on our own accord, but on your, with your strength, with your people, that we're we can do this together, two by two. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who gives us the wisdom, the discernment, and everything we need for the journey. Everything we need to be on this mission. Whatever it looks like. It can be big. It can be small. I pray that you would birth ideas right now in people's hearts and minds. That there will be new opportunities where we can share your love, where we can give, 
where we can be generous, where we can serve, may it be inside the church or outside the church, in our community, at work, wherever, wherever you are calling us to, God, I pray that you would help us to recognize that, to recognize this call right now, God, and to do something about it, God. I pray that you would give us the courage and the strength to not go home today unchanged. I pray that you would help us to acknowledge what you have for us today. That you would show us maybe what we need to write down right now, what we need to read up again this afternoon. Maybe we need to connect with someone to find out more what they've been having on their heart so we can maybe be on a mission together. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everything you're doing today, God. And for whoever, God, whoever might be fairly new on this journey with you or might not even find out, what might not even know much about you right now, Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name that you will touch hearts and minds today, God. And I pray that if there is anyone today who wants to make this conscious decision to be a follower of Jesus and then to be on a mission for Jesus, I pray that people would be bold and courageous and to talk to someone about that after, after the service. In Jesus' name, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Amen. An amazing, timely message for us all. Praying for power and authority to go before you as you enter the mission field this week. Have a great week and we'll see you in church next Sunday for Resurrection Sunday. How exciting. Be blessed.